of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, first, Jerry, you want, or Jim, you want to go ahead and talk now? Sure. Come on up there. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Manager, and Councilman, uh, or Commissioners, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Jim Bridges. I'm a local resident. Been here approximately 15 years. And I have three issues on my agenda. And if I can give you some <coughs> pictures, first one. And I'm not going to trash the previous commissioner, but I was made false promises that our code enforcing agent was going to send out letters on the weeds in property, on my prop or behind my property. And then after 30 days, if they didn't do something, the city would take charge, clean the lot, and build the uh, people. That's the property you see it's between my home and Jaramillo's old restaurant over on 3rd Street. The second issue, the house that you have there on the corner of 3rd and Stevens has been condemned. They put signs up. Uh, vagrants live in it. Police have been called numerous times by myself. They take the transients out, and that's all they do. The house is a health issue, I feel. It's a fire issue to the neighbor next door to it, and the vagrants continue to live in it. Uh, I'd like to know from Mr. Lewis if there is <coughs> anything in the plans to get rid of these after, like they did, like the Roaring Twenties, and you know, are we going to be pumped full of false promises? I'm, uh, that's it. I mean, Jim, I'm, I'll tell you right now, no false promises. All right, I'd okay? love to hear that. And I'll tell you right now that that one will be torn down. When? Oh, give us, give us about six months or so. I love it. We've got I some money it. left over from the Rowan 20s, which we didn't have to pay for. Great. We've got some money left over from the old wastewater treatment plant down there that we didn't have to pay for. Great. Um, we can put that one on the priority. As a matter of fact, Marty, why don't you step up and take that right there and put it on your priority list with the old jail and those other properties that Paul showed you. That, that's already been on the list, right? Yes, it should have already been on it, the list. We might it, have to what do I was told it was. We'll take care of it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thank you. We're, we're not going we're gonna, to we're gonna make promises that ain't going to be kept. All right. Thank you. I appreciate okay. your time. We'll take care of that. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Jerry, you want to wait until it comes up? Okay. Uh, item number one is public comment and discussion on our charter compliance. Is there anybody out there who would like to make a comment on our charter compliance? Once again, I will. We are in compliance with it for the first time since 2008. I'll second that. Has the council had a chance to re review the minutes? Yes. 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 Oh, you have one? Oh, yes. Sorry about that, guys start over here again. A uh, roll call. Mayor Hicks? Here. Pro Tem Quintana? Here. Councilor Sandoval? Councilor Dickens? Here. Councilor Lewis? Here. Now you take a motion to accept the agenda. I make a motion we accept the agenda for tonight. I'll second. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Okay. Now the meetings. Uh, just one slight change on the minutes. I'm honored the streets named after me, but it should be Dixie. Which one is that? On, uh, comments on page two. Any other corrections? That's all I can see. I'll accept the motion for those corrections. I'll second that. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Mario, you're up. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I didn't want to interrupt when you were accepting the agenda, but I was actually hoping that item three 
is tied to six, seven, eight, and nine. So would it be more appropriate to, to table this one? Move four into three. Uh, I, I can sit down and yes, sir. You can proceed with four and five, and then I'll step back up. Is that okay? That's fine. Jerry, you're up there with the website. Good afternoon, Councilman. Um, I was just here today to uh, um, put in a good word for uh, the website, uh, uh, the city website. Now, um, what I would like to see is, you know, I, I, since I, everybody knows I'm involved with the Fiesta de Colores, and since we did our, renewed our website last year, uh, Mr. Lewis here made a video for us. Uh, we've got quite a few hits on that, and it has done excellent job. You know, uh, everybody passing through town, uh, we get a lot of hits, I get a lot of calls. Um, this is the future. This is the age of information. Everybody going through grants or past grants is going to Google grants, and they're going to see what they could do, where they can eat, where, they're, where they can uh, go to the movie, you know, buy a pizza, whatever they need to do on this, and believe you and me, this is the wave of the future. And the better of a web page we could have, the better we're going to have uh, more economic uh, success in, in grants, in the grants area. Um, I've noticed uh, Albuquerque has a really neat website, it's called ABQ, ABQ 365, and if you get on that, it tells you everything that's going on. Um, it's updated regularly, and uh, uh, it, it's a really neat thing. Uh, a lot of the older generation, <laughs> they don't use the computers unless their grandkids show them how or their phones, but it's getting to be where everybody is using their phones now. You know, computers and phones, uh, it's, it's a way of the future. And I'd like to see uh, a better web page uh, produced with more information, um, just everything you can think of, but I, uh, I'm just here to to uh, to buck that and say we need a new a new better system on there. I agree. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Are you referring just to the city alone or, or the whole community as a whole? Well, actually, the city and the whole community. I noticed on the website it tells you you can go to the county site, you can go to the 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 uh, uh, chamber site, you can go to all different sites. Well. You know that that helps immensely. You know when somebody somebody breaks down, for instance, they're going to Google where can I get my tire fixed? Where can I, you know, go eat while my tires get it? Well, they need to know all this stuff. The phone books and phone uh, booths are a thing of the past. You can't walk down the street and you know look up the yellow pages and see where you what you need anymore. So this is the future. This is the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Now, what I'm, what I'm looking at here is the pro proposed website refill budget. Right. 4,130. Who, who would do this? Uh, this is a, a specific type of website called uh, Content Management System. And um, I feel like uh, this is the type of website that we'll need. Actually, this Chamber of Commerce is the website that we're talking about, not the city website. The government city website it would remain as it is because it's uh, uh, not only is Denise used to working with it and it's working fine the way it is just for government purposes, but uh, for promoting our town, promoting tourism and and uh, and retirees, I think it's the chamber website that really needs to be get a, re a rebuild. Yeah. And it's already that content management system. This guy already knows about it. He's from Kansas. He's the only one I found. I even Googled in New Mexico for uh, DNNs called .NET Nuke. And it's a type of website where you can replace modules that will uh, do various kinds of things. If you're familiar with Joomla, um, .NET Nuke, they're the same type of website. I've got about a seven minute video here, presentation to to uh, play the show. Uh, anyone in the audience that want to watch this thing and you can move down into this area because it's not that easy to see from back there. So if you want to come up here, you're welcome to come up before we start.
year, during the 2014 political campaign, at every event, someone in the audience would stand up and recommend that the city of Grants begin promoting our diverse, beautiful, and interesting culture that surrounds our entire area. Over and over, we would hear from people in the audience say that we are missing an opportunity to build our economic base by promoting our rich and diverse cultures, landscapes, and natural wonders. Within a hundred mile radius, Grants has more places to see and things to do than any part of New Mexico. Chaco Canyon, Mount Taylor, Zuni, El Malpai, El Moro, and Acoma, all within one hour of Grants. And when you reach out a little further, the choices are endless. According to the New Mexico Department of Transportation, 45,500 vehicles pass grants on I-40 each day. And based on a recent survey of 4,000 consumers, 80% of the respondents make travel arrangements online, and 60% of the respondents use mobile apps when traveling. That means that around 36,000 travelers a day that are passing grants are looking at their internet, making travel plans. So how do we tap into this group? Well, we don't need a survey to tell us that people are depending on the internet more and more every day. We need a website that is visually attractive, informative, and interesting, and grabs the attention of travelers before they pass and as they pass through grants. Today, people are reading less and depending more on imagery. We need a website that is full of great photographs and videos that create interest in the places they are about to visit. The footpaths and trails originated long ago in old Mexico, and winding past the mountains and mesas and malpais of these desert lands in New Mexico are called the Ancient Way. Along these trails exist today alligator juniper and Douglas fir trees that are centuries old. These are the silent observers of the travelers on the ancient way. And what a tale they could tell about this colorful procession of peoples representing an astoundingly diverse mix of cultures, religions, time periods, ethnicity, skills, groups. <coughs> Some came seeking adventure some opportunity, some inspiration, and some a home here in the high desert of northwest New Mexico, where they give life and form to some of the most beautiful art and craft in the world. The ancient way is now mostly, but not entirely, paved and not with gold, as the conquistadors of the past had hoped, but with treasure of a different sort. Treasure that awaits those modern travelers awaits you as you begin your journey on the Ancient Way Arts Trail. You could begin your journey in Grants, on the Mother Road, old Route 66. So our website would have a wide range of photographs and videos that are clickable and create interest for our potential visitors. When people see the variety of things there are to do here, it'll be a no-brainer for them and they'll stay in our area for two or three days. Here are some local attractions and events that happen in our area. The Mount Taylor Annual 50K Run, the Tour de Acoma, our local golf tournaments, our local baseball tournaments, the Quadrathlon, the Christmas Light Parade, several local rodeos, Fiesta de Colores, Fourth of July Parade, the Bike Rally, the Summer Concert Series, the Riverwalk Park, and Coyote Del Mount Pike Golf Course. And here are some places to see and things to do. Acoma Pueblo, Sky City, La Ventana Arch, El Malpai National Monument, Laguna Historic Church, Guadalupe Vineyards, Sandstone Bluffs, The Narrows, Mount Taylor, Gooseberry Trail, several historic churches, Sky City Casino, Dancing Eagle Casino, Continental Divide Trail, the Ice Caves, 
Zuni Pueblo, Petroglyphs National Monument, Chaco Culture Historical National Park, Double Six Gallery, Art and Artifacts Museum, Route 66, The Mother Road, Zuni Mountain Auto Tour, the Aviation Heritage Museum, Rama Farmer's Market, Blue Water Lake, the Bistai Badlands, the New Mexico Mining Museum, the Crown Point Rug Auction, Gallup, Red Rock State Park, the Zuni Mountain Bike Tour, Northwest New Mexico Visitors Information Center, Post Office Flats, and Trophy Elk Hunting. So who's going to do all this work? Well, Grants is at a turning point, and it's time that we had a full-time marketing director. Someone with strong video production <coughs> skills and advertising skills who can create and produce all of our billboards, all of our magazine advertising, all of our video production, and any television advertising we do. They would promote all of our upcoming events, including the light parade, the bike rally, the quadrathlon, and our summer concert series. They would design and produce all of our table tents located at motels and restaurants, and they would design all of the signage throughout our city. They would develop and maintain a working relationship with all our motels and restaurants, and they would do the daily maintenance of our website, which would include a rolling calendar of events. They would post all of our upcoming events on our Facebook page and our website, including golf tournaments, baseball tournaments, parades, music events, and gallery openings. This would be a coordinated advertising and marketing campaign that would streamline our marketing efforts. There would be a steering committee for our director with one person from the city council, the chamber, Main Street, the arts council, and lodgers tax. Most people in grants know that I-40 is a built-in revenue stream, so let's tap into it and help all our businesses and citizens benefit from the gold mine that's on I-40. So anyway, just something to start thinking about. We uh, we have our budget process coming up soon, and uh, going through it right, right, right now, Mike. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about employing somebody part time there. Well, it's probably a full time job to do um, to, for a marketing director. It's, it it would take a lot of work to to pull something like that together. When you're talking about all of the events that I mentioned on there that we have, and all of the places that we have that we can go. I think people are uh, reading less and depending more on imagery and videos. And uh, when they see these uh, videos that would raise interest in these places, I think that it's going to be a thing that will uh, uh, entice people to stay, to come and stay when they're making these travel plans. What do you think that position should pay? You're probably going to have to pay between forty and 50000 a year. Eight hundred to a thousand a month. I'm sure that uh, somebody with these skills are probably looking at somebody two or three years out of college uh, that that has a degree in marketing and uh, video production. That's that's where I'd like to see their strengths is in video production because I think that's uh, the, the 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 strongest point in a in a website. I think uh, the strongest draw is videos. People really like them and watch them. They just have to sit back and watch. They don't have to read. They don't have to thumb through things. They don't have to click on anything. You know, they just watch them. And I, I'm hoping and thinking that that's what's going to uh, uh, convince people to come here and stay here. There's too much to do in one day. You know, I mean, there's so many things around here to do. And there's a lot of things that are happening here that people don't even know about and places around here that people don't know about. And if we <coughs> tell them about it, I think uh, the, um, uh, the the traffic in the town will grow. We'll look at it in the budget process. Definitely. Anything else on that, Mike? No, I, I think that's a good idea. I Eddie? support that. <coughs> support it. Um, next, we have a memorandum of agreement for the Riverwalk Legacy Trip. I guess I'm doing this one. This is just so that the county can give us some money. Okay, and all it is is, as you can see, I've already signed it. And what we need, we need the council to send it to, to Eddie Michael. 
and what it will give us is give us a planning and design phase of seventy thousand dollars for the construction phase of this. this thing. And on that note, I will entertain a motion to accept the memorandum of understanding between the City of Grants and the Cibola County for the Riverwalk Legacy Trail Project. <coughs> to make a motion. To make a motion, we accept the <coughs> memorandum of agreement. A second. No second. Councilor Quintana. Yes. Councilor Dickens. Yes. Councilor Dewitt. Yes. Okay, Mario. Now you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council. It's a pleasure to be here. Let uh, keep me a second here to. In the agenda, we've got a uh, number of items, and this presentation is going to cover each one of those. Uh, we've got item six, capital water and wastewater infrastructure improvements. Item seven, college road bridge replacement. Item eight, radio street environmental review. And item nine, second street phase two. My intent as I go through the agenda today is I'm going to show you a location map of to orient everybody here tonight as to the projects that we're talking about, where they are. I'll give you some background information, and then, Mayor, I think at that point, I'll stand for any questions, and then you can kind of bring up uh, those particular items one by one and see what the pleasure of the council is. So, let's see. this location map, identifies College Road Bridge here in this little red dot. As you know, it's heading the uh, north part of town. Second Street portion that we'll be talking about is illustrated here in red as well, between High Street and the Rio San Jose. Radio Street is on the far west and south end of uh, I-40, uh, west end of town, shown here. And then I'll uh, down the presentation, we'll also show you where the uh, water wastewater projects are located. So that should orient you. The first project that uh, Council will be looking at here shortly is the Capital Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Improvements. With me tonight, I do have a student that uh, is getting ready to graduate from Hope. Um, Alonso is observing tonight. I also got Eric, one of our engineers that has been working with OMI to get a good handle on what the uh, the issues are and the priorities. The handout that was given to uh, Council show Jackson Street. Um, you, will, you will see that the three projects that we're talking about is Peel Street, Charles Street, not Jackson, and High Street. Uh, we coordinated with OMI and verified what the issues are. Uh, and, and so I've identified the, the, the projects in order of priority. And I'm going to have Eric. Uh, come up here for a minute and kind of walk you through each of the projects and what the issues are according to OMI and then I'm going to take over and talk about what those repairs might mean if you choose to move forward with them. Good evening. 
Hill Street. As uh, you might be well aware that Grant's infrastructure is aging and crumbling, and this is the case on Hill Street. Uh, it's my understanding that the sewer line is at a point where the top of the pipe is no longer there. And uh, same for some of the manholes. So this this project on Pill Street is bounded by the Guna and Central Avenue, 800 feet. <coughs> and basically, it would just be a remove and replace. Uh, we have raw sewage that's leaking or percolating into the into the ground, and uh, it's a high priority. Charles Street is much like Peel Street, uh, only it's 300 feet. Well, Charles Street is the one that goes through the Elks Lot and hooks into Jefferson. It hooks into Jefferson, yes, sir. Correct. Okay. And it has a failed manhole as well at Jefferson. Yes, yes sir. Right. So this, this project is bounded by the Laguna <coughs> Central. And the same thing, it's a clay pipe that's uh, basically crumbling. The manhole is located, like Mario said, at the intersection of Jefferson. Uh, this is also deemed a high priority project. High Street, this is a water, water line project. Currently there's a four inch ductile iron pipe and it's my understanding that OMI, they're out there in this location on a weekly basis. Um, maybe a break or a collapsed pipe, they're, they're out there weekly repairing. Um, this project is bounded by Nimitz to Halsley and from Halsley, bounded by Nimitz to Santa Fe Avenue a total of 1,500 feet of replacement pipe. The uh, priority list is identified er earlier, and you see in your agenda there, it, it did identify Pill Street first, Charles Street second, those are both gravity sewers, and then High Street being a water line. Um, uh, staff felt that it was important to bring the three projects before council. And uh, also, I, I just sort of kind of walk you through a scope of work this board to uh, this governing body to be fully aware so that um, you can make informed decisions and then hopefully when the public calls this, uh, the office and the staff you can assure them that you know it is being done within uh, standard specifications however it's not a roadway job it is a utility job and it's probably not going to look as attractive as one would want it um, so that that is that item. does anybody have any questions on on, on the water and uh, sewer job cost. on the, on the well, cost is one, but on the location of the lines, where are they located on the roadway center line, shoulder? Um, so, uh, to, to answer your question, the high street water lines are just off the center line slightly to the north. And that's because I've, I actually have gone out there over the years when they're repairing some of the water line. Uh, sewer and water, admittedly, I don't know. I Peel is right down the middle of the road. Peel is right down the middle of the road. Jefferson is right down the middle of the road. Wayne might be able to answer those questions. Yeah, they're right down the middle of the road. Are they? Yes, they and what will happen with that, I mean, you just can't really, if you're going to have a center line um, repair, you're going to have to shut down the entire lane, correct? Yes. Or the entire roadway, yeah. you know, yes. for that matter, because you won't be able to, to divert traffic onto a, uh, another road or another lane of, tra of travel? No, you're, you're, you're pretty, well, so, so um, in terms of what would happen in this case, the, the recommendation uh, as, as uh, the, the manager and, and I discussed is what's the most cost-effective way to handle these. Um, my recommendation to, to the manager was to let's, let's go ahead and just put out uh, a bid form of quantities, um, make the contract good for one year or two years, however you want, make it an on-call, and get some established quantities so that when you do have little things like this that come up, where it's just a pull it out and put in you know, a switch like for like, so to speak, then you guys can have a contractor that's qualified, licensed, you have the specifications to do the work. Um, I say that because I, I want this government body to also understand what the procurement mechanism is going to be with the contractor. We're not talking full engineering design. We're not talking go and survey it. We're not talking uh, full construction drawings. We're just talking put some contract bid documents together with the bid form, similar to what the state DOT would put out for paving or chip seal, that sort of thing, or, or GSA would put out on a statewide contract for uh, contractor services, or the city has done on striking in the past. Um, and that's really the most cost-effective way for these sort of remediation type projects. And yes, they would have to shut down the road. Cost now? What are we looking at? 
<coughs> we, we didn't run a, a cost estimate for this one for that reason. We're just going to put out a, a, a contract, probably not to exceed a total contract amount, and we can set a limit on it. Um, but but I, I didn't uh, run a full number on this at this point. Okay. It'll go out to public bid, and we'll let the public give us some bids and see what the numbers are, and, and then you'll have the ability to award based on that. So you're saying that we would piecemeal this thing a piece at a time? No, no, no. Um, an on-call contract, what that does is it allows us to put a, uh, um, a menu of items that would take to construct this job. It would have um, all of the permit uh, requirements to build the job. And what happens is you pay, essentially what you do is you have established price agreements, and then you pay them based on actual quantity of what they put in. So um, it's when, when we're talking about the piecemeal portion that what we're talking about is, I just want everybody to understand that when you come in and you trench a room and you, and you pave it back, you're going to have a nice black trench. Pretty you're one. see a pretty one. And then on both sides, in this case, you'll have uh, asphalt that's dilapidated. A good way to look at it is go to drive down Mountain Road. We did the same thing there. You can see what we pieced in that one piece all the way down Mountain Road. Yeah, and that's, that's basically what we're talking about there. I know there's some apartments along this route here, and uh, the water route be shutting down a lot of people at a time. You know. But I mean, it needs to be replaced. Well, uh, and they're having they're having they're having to do that now because they're having to go out and repair it every so, five feet. So I mean, that that's happening on a regular basis now. So we might as well go in and do it right. Yeah. So because. Uh, so let's get what, yeah, what Mario was talking about is, is an on-call contractor. We can actually go out for an RFP yeah. and hire a contractor that would be able to do these small jobs instead of going through a procurement process for every one of these small jobs, which ends up being very expensive on the, on the, on the front end. And this way, we can have an on-call budget at X amount of dollars over, say, a year's time. So if we have these come up, then we can just call them, and they can come in and, and give us price on the job. We'll have a good estimate on what it would be anyway. Uh, Mr. Uh, the manager is correct and I, I failed to give you that piece of information. Uh, traditionally speaking, there's a there's a, a book that accompanies the bid and that book as a rule of thumb runs about $3,500 just to prepare it. So every time you're putting out a project to bid, you've got to regenerate that specific book. If you do an on-call, then you've got a menu and, and you pay once and it's and you can, uh, procurement allows you to have it up to four years. <coughs> and you can have established prices, and it's been competitively bid. And remediation projects like this, it makes good sense to use that sort of mechanism. And that's the yeah. route we'll, that's the route we'll go. I agree. Okay. So Wayne, this is a problem area? Yes, sir. Is it as bad as uh, Houston Street? Was that street over there off of Sage? Yes. That was a humdinger. We, we redid that whole road, guys, 15 feet at a time. I know this is in the early stages, Mario, but um, my concern is always is disrupting the the access for the for the public and the residents. You know so what? we're going to need to really look at that because we're going to have to shut down that entire um, area for that block on the top portion, along with the bottom, to where they don't have access to even go anywhere. You've got that alley that will go through the back there that services all those apartment buildings too. Uh, right behind the log river there, that alley goes right down that. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. it starts over there. By the time the country goes all the way through, down past the log river. Didn't and you that's say the water line like, just goes on one side of the street? It's almost right in the it's middle. It's actually in the middle. It's almost right in the middle. Just north of the north side of the north of the road. Center. Right. Center line. Yeah. So I know that, that whole roadway is just going to have to be yeah, shut down yeah. completely. High Street's pretty wide. The other two are not as wide. I'll, I'll relook at it. We look at that. The well, other two, for sure, I'm pretty confident the sewer will have this one. You might be able to. This one you might be able to because it's it's yeah. sort of excessively wide. Yeah. Just have to not allow all those people to park on the side of the road like they do. Right. Do we know exactly what the amount, the distance that we're looking at? Yeah. It's, uh, on the water, it's 1,500 feet. 1,500 Yeah, on the sanitary sewer for uh, Peel Street was... Uh, 1,800, right? <coughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And Charles, just over 300. Okay. Any other questions on that? If you want, Mayor, I don't know if you want to entertain that one now, and then I can move on to the next one, or it's totally up to you. 
On this one here, we're going to we're going to get the the on call contract. Okay, and that's all we were just asking for for feedback. Yes, that's that's okay. that's so what we want there. That's the direction we're heading. Yes. Well, ahead. Uh, I'm a uh, I'm a little lost here, but I apologize for coming late. But uh, Pill Street Jackson, these you're doing this because why? What? Um, uh, Mayor Council Shannonball, what? Um, Hill Street, and, and I apologize, the memo shows Jackson, but we got clarification from OMI, and it's actually Charles Street, so it's not Jackson, it's Charles Street. Both of those streets have failing gravity sewers, and what's happening is just like we found on Santa Fe Avenue a few years ago and some of these other streets, uh, the existing sewer is well over 50 years old, and it's vetrified clay pipe, and the, the, the gases have eaten away over time, and now what you have in these streets are essentially just a, a cavity underground. A conduit that's that's carrying the raw sewage, so there really is no pipe. So we're coming in and putting in a new pipe. So we're getting bids to do this work. Is that what we're yes, doing? sir. We we're, we were asking this well, governing well, body to give us some direction as to what I want to do here is I want to someone to make a motion that we go out to RFP for on call contract or on call contractor to do these things. We have we have uh, Councilman Sandoval. We have we have these small projects like this that come up and they're coming up more and more. Um, we haven't discussed it at all. No, no, no yes, there hasn't been any discussion. Right here, and so, so we were we were talking about in rather than doing uh, a contract for each individual job, that what we wanted to do is get an on-call contractor that we can that 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 we will go through the procurement process to identify and hire. Then when we have these small projects come up, we don't have to keep re-going over, redoing the the, uh, the bid documents and all of that. Yeah, it, it's like that on-call contractor that we got to strike our streets. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Very much the same case. Exactly. Uh, I'm just wondering where the priority one, two, and three came from. Because, I mean, That's these are bad roads. I guess there's other, other ones. You've checked them on them? Well, these ones here, these ones actually have collapsed sewer lines in the road that we have dug up and we have <coughs> seen that they're collapsed and we put a fix in them just to keep the sewage flowing through them right now. Okay, then you can verify that with Wayne. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've stood there and watched him dig them up. One, I think, one, I think the, the one I've heard this. Yeah, it, this is the first time that it's been brought up, but, first time it's been but, brought up. But, but we just feel that the only thing we're, we're, we want to do tonight is just agree that we can go ahead and go out for our RFP for a contract, or that's all. Call truck contract. That's all, yeah. So that's okay, then we just continue with different roads throughout the town. Yes. Yeah, you also have the ability to take that contract. Once you go out to, to bid, and you get the bids in, and, and, uh, and it'll come before council with the letter of recommendation from the engineers to the apparent and qualified little bidder. And then at that point in time, uh, this governing body will direct the manager and staff, and then we'll, we'll we're going to, you may say, well, it's not Peel Street, it's this street. That's fine. But the on call contract, the on-call contract will cover it. Yeah, okay. yeah, the, 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 the council will make that decision. Yeah. So on that, Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Mike. Uh, I move that we proceed with our on-call engineer to um, prepare the bid forms. And to uh, for a request for bid, or do you want request for proposal? Request for proposal. For bid. They okay. have to for for request bid. for bid. Request for bid. For an on call contractor. Do I get a second? I'll second that. I think that's a good idea. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Sandoval? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. That takes care of that one. The uh, next item on is item 7, College Road Bridge. Again, just wanting to bring this governing body up to, to speak. Uh, some of you are aware, and some of you, uh, this will be the first time. The uh, About 18 months ago, I think it's been now, uh, maybe close to a few years, uh, we worked with FEMA, uh, went round and round over a course of nine months to take um, what they originally estimated at $11,000. We appealed their estimate, uh, and finally were able to get a funding agreement with them uh, through the appeal process, uh, and they gave us an, an amendment to the agreement uh, today you have 108,993 in FEMA funding. The <clears throat> there's there's two alternatives. Uh, there are many alternatives, but two alternatives that we're recommending tonight uh, for this governing body to consider. Uh, and again, just uh, to provide direction to staff. Uh, 
One of the design alternatives is to replace College Road Bridge with the traditional standard bridge. Um, it'll be similar to the one in Nimitz, a little smaller in span, uh, but it would be open uh, to, to the way you see the one there over the Rio San Jose. That's what we call 100-year design. Uh, we're estimating about 900,000. I want to just clarify that the 900,000 is total project budget that we put together. And we have a detailed breakdown estimate on that. So when I say project versus construction, project is everything that goes into it, all the planning, all the engineering, all uh, construction management, all the construction itself. Uh, th that's a project budget that we're presenting. The 50-year um, design would look at uh, re tearing out the existing structure as well, but putting back a uh, culvert type bridge. And it would be designed to, to convey, to carry the 50-year event underneath the roadway. It would be in a dip condition like the one you see now. It would be sized, that dip, what we call the crest, would be sized so that it could pass the 100-year flow on top. Uh, that, that complies with um, standard engineering practice if we want to go that way. The total project budget to do that is 430000 Keep in mind that uh, either of these approaches or alternatives require you to anything that you do now once you touch it you have to bring it up to your current standard so when we're talking about a 50-year design with the culverts you're still talking about sidewalks you're still talking about uh, guardrail you're still talking about ADA compliance and transitions even though there's no sidewalks on college road but we've got a we've got a, that bridge design has to has to meet the new standards if you go to the hundred year it's the same thing so um, those are those are the uh, the alternatives that we wanted to present tonight and the, and the budgets, and we're really just asking council for, for direction. So just so design number one, uh, with those concrete slope blankets that you guys are, that <coughs> they need to be in place, of course, but um, how deep would those go uh, beyond the surface of the, of the actual ground there where the arroyo is at? Um, the depth of the blanket, the toe, is based on what they call a scour calculation. Right. Uh, we haven't done one for that particular area. That would be part of the design. My gut feeling tells me, just knowing sort of the areas down here, you're probably looking somewhere in the five foot. And, yeah. and the reason I'm asking that is just because of the terrain that's yes. in that area. I mean, we've got a lot of sand, silt, kind of, and uh, one good rain through there, like we have, yes. could possibly you know, mess that, <clears throat> that whole structure, you know, just from, just from the, the, oh, the, the flow, the flow of water. So, um, and, and then design number two would actually be a, a bridge, I mean, actually a reconstructed bridge, correct? Yes, sir. How much land is still available out there for future building? There's still There's plenty. There's plenty. How, how, how much that's going to grow out there is what I'm asking about. Well, assuming it's one of the places that can grow. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the places that still has room to grow. Um, and of course, out west. But How old is that existing cross? Mike, you need to go look at that. I saw it today. Okay, it's, it's probably 20 years old, but it's been that way and deteriorating since I was in office eight years ago. Um, I've been complaining about that bridge for eight years. And where we're at right now with this, guys, is I plan on putting this in the budget. For next year, okay, starting in July, um, me and Paul, we believe we found the money to do this, and so that's that's what I'm looking Which at. Which design? Guys. The, the one year design number one. It's it's what we can afford. We don't have our nine hundred thousand, but we do have the three hundred and thirty-four thousand for RM to do this without asking anybody for any help or anything else. And my point being is, with the floods that we've had here coming out of the west, if that came out of the north, those people that live out there are done. Okay, they can't get out, we can't get into them, and we need to take care of that now. And when it does, uh, when there is more water there, let's say more than a 50-year event, water will flow over this new design. Yes, yes it will. Yeah. And, it, and it has to be signed properly, designed properly. As uh, Councilor Quintana pointed out there, you do have to have upstream and downstream treatments. The um, the dip or the crest, as we call it, the low water crossing, needs to be designed in such a manner that it's conducive to uh, overflow. This is my Mr. 1,000, right? Yeah, this is the Yeah, uh,
Well, this is in my district, so I think we need to get this this design number one. Is I'm going to support that. I think we that's probably what we can afford as a as a city right now, and um, and move forward on it and get that uh, get that bridge built. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, Mario, we talked about uh, possibly co-opting or, or, or partnership, partnering with the schools on it, since since that's the only it route in and out to get kids <coughs> to and from school. Uh, is that still a possibility? Uh, Mr. Manager, Mayor, yeah. it, it is. Uh, in the last conversation that we had, we talked about waiting until about September to approach the superintendent um, to, to talk about an MOU, and that the timing would be uh, appropriate before January, for a number of reasons, we've got Capital Alley that will be uh, working, hopefully, with the COG again and, and uh, bringing some of these priority projects. And with a partnership, the school district would be very, very beneficial going to our legislators and, and looking at this potentially if you decide to build this uh, spring of next year to look at other funding. Um, uh, to also, we can apply for co-op money to the school district, but again, we need the MOU in place. Uh, the thought there is that we could fill out the application process for them. We can develop the MOU, and then you could add, act as a fiscal agent and then take those dollars. Which you, because uh, buses are going over there to, to pick up students. Um, finally, uh, Mr. Manager, I, you know, we really hadn't approached the flood control district going into next year, so we could uh, uh, certainly approach them on this project as well. That'll work, because the more money we get from them, the less we have to spend out of our general fund. <clears throat> when you tear this out, where are you going to reroute traffic to? Right through the ditch. <coughs> we'll probably... We've done a similar project like this in the past. We can either build a temporary berm upstream or downstream. Uh, typically what we want to do is uh, we'll time the construction so it's not during the rainy season. That's uh, step number one. And number two, if we build a temporary berm, we can divert them and then build a structure. Or what we can do is um, build a low water crossing and then just put a base, gra a gravel base and let them just drive into the arroyo, lay the slopes back, and that's probably going to be the most cost effective manner. So we'll look at those options for design. Back to the car. You get to the car. Forest service, brother. You ain't going through there. Forest service ain't going to allow us to do that. And, and that over at the baseball field, the forest service? No, no, no. Yeah, but I'm talking yeah. about at the college itself. There's an access right under there. Yeah, but that's forest service. Used to be there long ago. That's forest service land now, and they're... I, mean, I thought theirs was in, within the fence to... It's from the, the fence to the bottom of the mesa, Eddie. It goes from the fence to the bottom of the mesa. They own that whole section there and even though it's not fenced off even though it's not fenced off have and i guarantee you yet? yeah i have yeah I've been i, 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 I didn't put it on my agenda guys. today but we can uh I, I, maybe when we're done here i can brief on where that's, where that's i mean at. this is as a temporary access yes. well the, the the concern uh counselor uh, sandoval is that um we have to so part of the cost this project cost has an environmental um, clearance component to it and uh Councilor Katana, you know that anytime our footprint is, whether it's temporary or permanent, we have to describe that area of disturbance. So if you start pushing vehicles into uh, federal property, the environmental becomes a real challenge, and that's the largest hurdle. It takes the most time and costs the most money. <coughs> so we really wouldn't advise pushing them into federal land. And I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to add along with the deadline on the uh, MOP to get that. Um, is, there, is there a deadline that we need to so that we can kind of take these steps so we can make sure ensure that this stuff is being... Uh, for, for, for the map you mean? Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, going back to the manager's uh, original uh, question, the timing would be to um, get an MOU started in <coughs> September and have it executed by the end of the year of this year uh, with the school district and then the solicitation letters generally come out second week of January. Okay. Uh, and then we have till about March 15th has always been uh, uh, the deadline. So we have a two-month, from mid-January to mid-March, to submit for both the co-op and the map. Uh, so as long as we can stick to that MOU this, this late year and get that executed by December, then it positions us for... Right, uh, and that's what I'd like to see happen because I don't want it to fall through anything, you know, because we, because we missed a deadline, and then we have to wait the following year to, like, you know, to kind of keep pushing things absolutely uh, forward. So uh, I think that's real critical in this, this whole situation. Yes, sir. Who's responsible if we get a 50-year flood during the construction? Um, so what happens is in the construction documents, uh, number one, we're going to set the schedule to where we work. Um, <coughs> we're not building in the middle of July and August. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, um, as part of the contract documents, we have what they call water diversion. So you have a bid item in there that the contractor has to protect our work. 
Um, if you have... So um, the contractor is responsible. Yes, with the exception that within all of the standard um, owner to contractor contracts, agreements, there is a, a clause for act of God. So if you had an act of God, something that was unusual, then the contractor does have a right to come back and ask for uh, any level of compensation. So I just want to make that very clear. Any other questions? And they have this on time schedule if they actually get it, they, they don't know. There's a late fee if they don't finish on time. We can uh, we can do liquidated damages as part of the as part of the contract. If that's something that the, this council would like to uh, put into the uh, contract, I think with a bridge that's appropriate. Okay. I mean we've got we're going to be cutting we're going to be affecting you know whatever it is 200 people out there every day coming and going. So if the contractor is two months late. <coughs> It affects a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Yes. And our emergency vehicles. Right. So, we'll, Eric, we'll just make sure we have liquidated damages in the. Yes. Mayor, I move that we um, uh, instruct our on call engineer to proceed with uh, design alternative number one. I'll second that. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Sandoval? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Oh. <coughs> Next, Radio Street. Anybody from Radio Street here tonight? Man, they showed up when we were giving them the money. Now that we're doing the work, they don't show up no more. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mario. Uh, Mayor, Council. On Radio Street, uh, we had, uh, as part of the ongoing co coordination with, with the COG a couple months ago, I went ahead and put together a uh, description of scope of work for environmental review <coughs> and permitting. And we went and sent those out to three qualified companies that can provide those services. You should have within your packet a recommendation letter that identifies the three companies, their prices, and the recommendation of award to Marin and Associates. That's correct. We discussed this. Yes, we did. I believe it was the last meeting. Yes, we did. So let's go ahead and do this one. Let's do it. I'll entertain a motion. <clears throat> we'll make a motion we accept Maryland and Associates. 14,586.26, excluding tax. Second. Councilor Quintana. Yes. Councilor Sandoval. Yes. Councilor Dickens. Yes. Councilor Lewis. Yes. Second Street. Second Street. Again, we, uh, in the earlier slide, we were showing you kind of that next project that we're looking at as a whole between High Street and the Rio San Jose. The uh, city has a total total budget today of 744000 The handout that was provided to you gives you a breakdown of where the funding is, uh, the four different funding sources on that end. Uh, capital outlay, previous year of 259 uh, Commitment with the uh, last mayor when we presented in 2013 of 100,000 from the Rio San Jose. Uh, the city has not received that money yet, and I did put a call in to uh, Cynthia Spidell today before lunch. Uh, so hopefully I'll get a call back there so that we can uh, put in a uh, request to go ahead and release the funds now as the city is prepared to move forward. You've got a uh, co-op for 160,000, and then finally uh, this year your legislators awarded 225,000. That funding agreement should make its way down here sometime in July, August, um, for a total again of 744,000. I do want to just impress that the 744,000 will not construct from High Street all the way to the Real San Jose. Uh, we're fine-tuning the the um, the uh, limits now to get to get a, a pretty close idea of how far we think we can build. Uh, but we are going to be starting at High Street, working our way north. The nice thing about it is, although we have water and sewer replacement within the project, we do not have storm drain in the first, oh, about, what, 600 feet, Eric? So, so that uh, brings the cost down a little bit as we're working into there. Uh, but one of the things that we do need to, to do is, at a minimum, we're going to build a full roadway section uh, for a few hundred feet, and then we're going to carry the storm drain, and we're going to have a trench where we finish all the way to Rio San Jose, because we have to bleed that storm drain out. 
So we're going to build you a nice section of road, a nice segment, and then as part of the 744, we're taking the rest of the storm drain out. Uh, again. Yeah, and then once that storm drains in, then we can just cover it, right? <coughs> because we'll have water, we'll have storm drain, we'll have sewer all in the ground then, right? Um, you, you won't be able to build all the sewer and water all the way to, to the Rio San Jose right now. We we're going to build as much line. as we can with 744. We already did the water line. Oh, on the back side. That's right. We did. Well, That's, right. Water line. That's right. We only need sewer. So and we're camera we're camera the uh, sewer. Right? Yes, because we already did the water line That's all right. the way down. Okay. So um, we should be able to build a pretty long stretch. Yes. The uh, although not part of this information here, we do have a meeting in Santa Fe tomorrow with the Water Trust Board. Uh, we're making a three-minute presentation. That's all they give us. We've already given them the handouts, and uh, we've got uh, a package there uh, to replace the bridge. So uh, that'll be our hearing tomorrow, and hopefully. That that uh, that goes well. So, um, if it does, we'll be coming back at the end of the year, hopefully increasing the project. I don't see street lights on here. No street lights. Um, we will put the infrastructure. We will not put up the street lights as part of this unless this governing body directs staff otherwise. Uh, typically, what we'll do is we'll run the the, the conduits. We'll put the J boxes in, and uh, at some future date, when the entire roadway is is done, then you have the ability to pull all the wire, set your bases, and set your your street lights. Uh, but right now, we're not we're not planning on that unless we're directed otherwise. And right now, we don't have the money for that, so, so we're going to put it in as we go. Okay. Well, if the if the conduit's there, all we'd have to do is pour pads and later, yeah, put the lights in. Yeah, you won't have to tear the road again. You'll be able to slip all the. Slip it right to the fire. Right. That's good. Any other questions? So tonight, all we're requesting is. Um, as, as we're finalizing design and we're going to be going for certifications because there is DOT funding in this case. We have, um, there's some permitting requirements at the DOT, there's five certifications. As we get through that in May, we were just asking tonight that uh, this governing body approve uh, for us to go out to bid contingent on DOT uh, certifications and approvals. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, direct Wilson and company to move forward with this um, second street project. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Sandoval? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Gillis? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Mario. Next, golf carts. Uh, we'll have uh, Nanny's here tonight to give us a little uh, report on, on you know, the need for the for the carts and, and some of the, the tournaments and things that he has out of the golf course and, uh, and things. So why don't you, you can go ahead and come up, Manny. Yeah, right now we have, uh, there, we have a fleet of 60 golf carts and we have about 39 of them that can make 18 holes actually make 18 holes and the rest that I have in there just can't make it so when I have a big tournament or a busy weekend I can't accommodate the people that go out there that's my situation with the, with the golf carts what what are the 20 what do the other 20 golf carts need well it's, the batteries are you know the batteries are they won't make it. They'll make maybe nine holes at the most, and pretty soon the the rest of them are just going to start doing that also. How old? How long has it been? How long five years. Been? Five, five years since we since we did this yeah. last time, guys. Where I'm at with this is I think we just need to to pay and buy the golf carts, and then we put the batteries in them and we maintain them. Um, Forty-eight thousand dollars a year for golf carts. To me, is it's just beyond me, okay? We don't spend that on our youth. We don't spend that on any of our youth in this town, on anything that we do with our kids. We make the parents pay it all. And the city of Grants is going to pay $48,000 a year for golf carts. Um, all of our other parks, and this does include our cemetery, is $650,000 to maintain these. Uh, we budget over $750,000 at the golf carts. Um, I'm just... I'm against going into another lease for $275,000 over five years. That's where I stand on this. Is the maintenance of the golf carts going to fall upon the 
crew all used to handle, or we're going to hire a new person? Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah I gave you, I gave you the, the uh, breakdown of what the cost of maintenance would be on the golf carts uh, compared to leasing the golf, uh, golf carts. And those numbers that I gave you, I'm not even sure that we can do that for that price on the maintenance. We, we will have to hire someone else. 60 more pieces of equipment uh, is not going to be able to uh, be maintained by our current uh, uh, mechanic out there. He's all he can do to maintain the carts that he does. Um, there's really not anybody that, that uh, maintains their golf carts for the reason is it's so much more cost effective to lease them because then we have no maintenance on them. They're under warranty and so our only cost is the lease of them. Uh, I think it was uh, um, put in the paper wrongly uh, last week that we do maintain the golf carts but we don't do the maintenance on them. They are under warranty. And I had another conversation with an individual today that I talked to about the parks who has been involved with uh, uh, in the golf course business uh, for a long time and he brought it and what he told me is he said he worked for American Golf for quite a few years and American Golf is a private company that runs golf courses and he said that everything that they do is based on dollars profits and dollars and they found that that not only does is it more cost effective to lease the carts but it's also more cost effective to lease than woolen equipment because the cost of maintenance with labor and parts is uh, just outweighs outweighs the cost of the of the uh, of the carts and so I mean if if I thought for one minute that we would save money maintaining the golf carts that's what we do we do. Oh, I have a uh, comment real quick and and what it is is that we've never had to maintain golf carts. So we don't even know what it entails. That's one problem that I have. Okay, having somebody employed to do this, don't have any idea, don't have, don't have any idea how much breaks down, that kind of thing. If we already having issues with batteries, those kind of things, wear and tear, tires, um, the seats, then again, we don't want things starting to look crappy because we have a good golf, we have a nice golf course up there that attracts a lot of people to our town from Gallup, Albuquerque, Acoma, Laguna, and our local yeah. local people. Andy, what, what is that tournament you have coming up in May now where you have 120 players? Oh, 120, yeah, it's at uh, Great Vistia uh, Golf Tournament, and they have 120, so. And these, these are, this is an out-of-town group that comes in here? Some are from out-of-town, a lot of Albuquerque people, but then yeah. also the, the week before that we also have the Family Center a tournament, and that's a big one also, so. Mm -hmm. If we, don't, the, if we don't do the maintenance on these, why are 20 of them not working? Right. right. It's just the batteries. I mean, they're, they're fine. It's just the batteries. Just yeah, but they're under warranty. They're still under warranty. They're under warranty. They're under warranty. They're the yeah. company's not coming in and replacing them. No. It seems like they should all be 100% working. When, 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 and, and this is the thing, see, because, because the golf carts don't break down during the, the four or five year Actually, they, what do they last? They last about four and a half years, don't yeah. they? It's about four and a half years that they last. During that time, you just don't have any maintenance on them. We just, we just don't. And uh, but after that time, then they're all maintenance. But if it's just the battery, if they're under warranty, they should be replaced. Well, the the batteries are already no, down. Well, now due to battery. Well, you, you, I guess you misunderstood me. The thing is, is that during that the time of the, of the lease for the four and a half years, we don't have it to do any maintenance on them because they don't break down. With the batteries are good. You know, we have very few problems with it. The tires are new, uh, the cables, everything is new. So we don't have the maintenance. They are under warranty for certain items, right? The batteries is not one of them. Not one of them. But the batteries last for four to four and a half years. So we don't have to put those, we don't have to put them in there. But now we would in the next in the next year we would have to spend it's a thousand dollars a cart to put them in that's sixty thousand dollars we have to pay off the lease that we have now that's forty five that's a hundred and five thousand we have to hire somebody and even if we hire somebody at only nine dollars an hour about seventeen thousand dollars a year when you add in another eight thousand dollars in benefits we're looking at about twenty six thousand dollars there 
So now you're up to 135,000. Then you have to have a little bit in your budget, and I'm only budgeting $6,000 more, uh, which is only $100 a cart uh, for the first year in other, in other uh, uh, maintenance items in there. The parts for these golf carts are very expensive. And and um, apparently they don't re they don't fix nothing because we've got thirty of them down. You know, just the batteries. It's just the, the batteries. It's the batteries down. Well, there okay. is. Paul, a couple the of things that we I have a couple of questions fixed. regarding the lease. Now, one of the questions I did a lot of research on this, and one of the questions that I came up with was the lease. Why do we have to lease to buy? Why can't we just lease? That's an option that I want. I want to be looked at. Yeah, yeah. I did. We or did even be, we refurbished ones. We 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 talked about we talked about uh, we talked about leasing uh, we talked about leasing a straight lease and a lease to buy. But this is the only the only thing that they do. They, they don't offer it. This is the only thing they offer. Yeah. Well, they don't do anything basically. They don't they don't fix them. We pay our own insurance. They don't maintain nothing. They just yeah. Buy. Okay, I had another thing though, real quick. I, let me just. One more thing that I that I looked into was, like Manny mentioned, we have we have twenty to thirty golf carts that are pretty much hitting their peak of, of not being operable. Okay, um, I don't know what the next what the other thirty forty are going to do. Nobody knows. What I was tossing around is why do we have to go? Another option we could look at is why do we have to buy all sixty? Can't we just buy thirty? And leave the good thirty. We've never seen the problem that happens. We've never maintained or put any maintenance into any of them. So we, none of us know what's going to happen. And I'd like to see if we're going to do that. We're going to put maintenance into some of these golf carts. We need to go through a little training phase of this to see if it's going to be cost efficient for us. Well, we have to pay the forty-five thousand anyway. Sure. Well, this we is the last. Have, so why not try it for a year? If it doesn't work out, we'll go to a lease again. Before you came. We just hired another another mechanic, and that's my that point. Have. That's what I was going to say. We didn't have a third mechanic. Now we don't we have to hire another guy to do this. Yeah, we, we just yes. hired a third mechanic. We, we still don't have to hire another guy. To do why this. can't we bring somebody from our motor? From exactly, from, from, yeah. the third one that we just hired. Yeah, Guys, we there's we just a more. There's a better way to do this. And my point being is, we've got this town that is falling apart. Our infrastructure is falling apart, and we continue to throw eight hundred thousand dollars a year out there at the golf course. Okay, and I mean, when it was originally set up, where the employees played free, the politicians played free, it was a health issue. It was so that you went out there and you walked the golf course. You didn't ride around in the golf cart. It was for your health. That's why you were allowed to play for free. My point being here, guys, is, is the budget out there has got to be cut. We spend too much money at that golf course. And when you include the lawsuits and the, the crap smell that I was smelling last night as we were watering the golf course, the cost goes up to millions instead of just, I mean, how much money do we make a month off golf carts? We bring in a little over, right around $100,000 on average, a little, well, a little more than that. Over five, the last five okay. years, we brought in $575,000. Well, and that's not true because at the end of the year, we've supplemented the golf course with $89,000 one year, yeah. $112,000 one year at the end of the year to make things match out there. Right. So that, that doesn't jive for me either. Okay, if it's making a hundred thousand, then we're only seven hundred thousand dollars. No, in a you, you misunderstood me. The, the okay. rental of the golf carts brings in a little more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. The rental that's what I'm talking about. The rental amount. Okay, so that, so that once, once our lease is done, we'll be making a hundred thousand dollars a year on the right. carts. Yes, without we'll be spending lease. more than that on maintenance. I don't believe that. No, Here's, if, if we're going to spend here, more than forty eight thousand dollars. A year on maintenance on golf carts that we do not need them. Well, thirty of them are sitting there rotting. They're not rotting. Well, okay, and another thing, guys, cutting back and not putting the money out there at the golf course. There's, look at the shape that gallops in. I don't know if you guys been out there. It's terrible. Well, that's where we're getting everybody from that area to come and play golf over here. Yeah, because they cut they back. Rose, they rose to get they cut back on all of their funding, and now their golf course doesn't even look like a golf course. Our water infrastructure is about sixty years old, I would guess, in most of these places in town. We have water breaks 
Wayne knows every other day. And that's where we need to be putting our money in our infrastructure. Not in our government. Uh, the, these people that these people that come and have tournaments here, they, they can choose where they where they have their tournaments. And uh, if, if we're not able to accommodate them, then they'll go elsewhere. You're right, Paul. That's what's going to happen. You're right. You just saw a video. Of I thought we're trying to bring people into our community. I thought we are trying to bring economic well, development into our community. Here, 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 hold on, hold on, let me finish, okay? Yeah. Those now, golf carts are free. To me, that's right. you got to rent them. To me, right. um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Maybe. I mean, that's one of our attractions to our town. One of our best attractions. One of our best attractions. You know what? You guys don't see. I go out there, and I see the people that are brought in. I, I see the people that I don't even know that are coming in from Albuquerque, Gallup. Laguna, for that matter, just to come and spend their money here in our town. So there, there's a lot of positive to this. Yes, there's some money that we're, we're spending, like we're saying that it's not efficient enough. I don't believe that. It's not efficient at all. Uh, at all. all. You know what, then let's close it down. How about that? Well, here's, well, here's, here's, here's a better idea. idea. Here's no, a better won't. idea. If we have okay, to no, check it out, guys. Hang on. Here, here's what I plan to do when Manny's contract comes up with Encore, okay? I plan to lease that golf course, guys. We're going to lease that sucker for $250,000, $300,000 where we will pay someone to run the golf course. You can make all the money you want to off the liquor license, the restaurant, your greens fees, whatever. And then you take the golf course. And that includes the employees and everything else. We'll absorb the employees that we can. The ones we can't, we will lay off. Because the amount of money that we're spending out there compared to what is going on in our town with our roads, our infrastructure, our sewer lines that are pumping sewer into the ground instead of going to our wastewater treatment plant. That's where our priorities need to lie. And that's where my priorities lie. Do I want to close the golf course? No. But it needs to be more efficient than us sending $800, $900, a million dollars out there a year. And it's bringing in 100000 so that means that we're only 800000 in the hole, 700000 in the hole, instead of the whole 900000 that's where I'm at with this, guys. So how much are the baseball parks bringing in? It depends. It depends on if we get we a tournament just I'm like you guys. I'm a taxpayer here, and okay. I want to keep my money here. No okay. I think Come things on. can remain the same as they are out there. We can pay this last payment. We can try it for a year to maintain these things. And, and believe it or not, there will be more golf carts running once we take over because we'll get those 20... Carts, uh, batteries in those 20 carts, and uh, if we establish a log, uh, uh, a maintenance log, and have one of our people go out there once every two weeks, more than what these guys are doing now, uh, then our golf cart should actually be in better shape. I mean, here's something about you saying taxpayers, Ralph. That's something that we might want to do too then, is put it to the taxpayers and let the taxpayers vote on it in 2016 when these two gentlemen's seat comes up. Good. And let the people of this town decide. Because I know when I was running for office, this is one of the things that I ran on. And obviously that's what the people want because I won by a landslide. And this is one of the things I ran on, is accountability at the golf course, accountability to, at the police department, accountability throughout this city. Well, I, I, I the golf course is, a beautiful golf course. We appreciate everything you guys are doing, and the golf course is running well. I think that this is a smaller issue than we're making of it. Uh, there's there's no harm in us just paying this last payment, try it for a year. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to lease and we'll get a whole new fleet. And, and those things will last another year, and it won't cost that much money to get these other carts up and running with new batteries. And uh, if it doesn't work, we can... Uh, we can we can go a different direction in a year from now. But, but if it's working great, then we're making money. There's no reason why it wouldn't work. That's right. right. It's, it's not try it for a year. It's just do it. Let's make, make it work. <clears throat> You're ready, and you said you have the third mechanic that we can send over there to help out to change the battery. On that note, well, look, wait, we got this this. Paper that's, that, that I read that these carts are supposed to last 20 to 30 yeah, years. Yeah, 20 to 30 years, not five. Not five, not five years. I mean, too many golfers would be after 20 years. Use a cart that's As opposed to the condition they are now. 
in five years. Well, they're in good condition if, now. If they're not kept up, yeah. if, if there's a good maintenance program, I have, then when I put out a, a when I put out a golf cart and it's got the, the, the windshield, and then I have some that don't have a windshield. The golfers will load up, and then they'll notice that there's no windshield, so then they'll put some up that, that have the windshield, and that's just through years of uh, you know a ball hit it. Anyway, then have a windshield, so they don't want the one without the windshield. Well, then so, the windshield. And if these guys going to cost a lot of money to, to to get them all up. I mean, how often? I mean, they don't use they don't go out so there they take all windshields out. They don't go out there to <laughs> abuse them. They go out there just to use them to get them from one hole to the next. I don't think they go out there to abuse them. Maybe you should go visit the golf course a little yeah, more yeah, often. Yeah, yeah. Come out there. This is a public course, guys. We yeah. get, we can, anybody can use those golf carts. All they got to do is come and rent them from Manny. Now, what they do out there, Manny can only mo monitor so much of that course. He can't see everything. I've seen from my own eyes and reported it to Manny, the abuse that those things take. And I'm not saying that they're not, they're not, you can't use them for 20 years, but they do take abuse. It's just not what you think, drive up to where you're going to hit the ball next and get back in and just drive. No. Yeah, but they're made to last 20 years. If you want, uh, well, the first class These operation, you want to have some new carts, provide new carts. You people. guys remember this. This, this, this is, how many, how many state tournaments have we attracted here, Manny? Well, high school, are, okay? Yeah. yeah, we have. We have had one uh, high school tournament, and I think Seth... Uh, Working Hang on, on, Seth. We'll get to you one second. We didn't. We didn't. We have a state tournament, though. Yeah, we, we had a state tournament here, yeah. guys. Do you know what that entails? That's bringing several schools and families to our town. We just now in order to the state baseball tournaments, Michael. Ruben, no, that's, that's not as big. Ruben, but let me finish, okay? What it does is this brings many people into our town, okay? Now, in order to meet the criteria for them to come to play golf here. You've got to have a nice facility. We, we're we still going to have golf. And we're still going to have no, a nice facility. No, I'm not saying that we're not. All I'm saying is that's, have that's, that's nice what the NMA looks at when they when they go to places. They and look and to see have, what we have. We're still going to have a nice facility. Of we're course. We're still going to have 60 golf carts. We're just not going to spend $48,000 on a new lease, $275,000 over five years. And there's no way anybody's going to convince me that it's going to cost that to maintain those golf carts over five years. If the batteries last four and a half to five years, that's $60,000, bang. There's no more cost for batteries for four to five years. We're lacking I'm mechanical not. accountability. So that's it. Modi, you're saying $275,000 a year, but those golf carts pay for themselves. No, they don't. The, the not golf when carts. we budget, budget $800,000 a year I'm out there. I'm talking about the golf carts. Not talking about the whole golf course. The, I'm talking, I'm about, talking the course. about the whole the golf course. Let's say 20 years on a golf cart. It does last if you own it. Yeah, and and you own yourself. Them. We're going to own them. That's no, no, no. no. I'm talking it. about an individual. If I own my own golf cart, it's going to last me 30 years. <laughs> if I go rent it, it may last two months. Because you're going to maintain it. That's why. We just need someone to maintain it. Yeah, but am I going to maintain every one I rent up there? No. We you make it last 20 years? No, the city will. I've seen those golf carts and they're in pretty good shape. And, and uh, if they only need batteries, then I think that we can try it a year. That's what I said. Seth, your turn. What do you got to say? Step up to the mic. I, I just wanted to say that I know we're looking at finances, we're looking at materials, we're looking at long range, but that golf course for me provides an avenue for our youth to, to learn integrity, to learn honesty, to learn all these traits that we are trying to build in the golfing, you know, code. I mean, when we go out there, we're, there's honesty about how you play. There, there's looking after each other, helping each other take count of, of your score. And and these kids that our kids from the high school, and some from the middle school sometimes when the eighth graders come in and want to play, it, is part of the program. But when we have them here in a tournament, we want whatever the argument might be, we want the parents, we want the grandparents. Uh, we have grandparents who follow their kids around constantly throughout the tournaments. We have their parents there. So we want this to look good. We want this to be attractive. Question. Yes? Don't the high school kids walk when they play golf? They do, but their they parents... They walk all the way, right? But the, the parents, the, uh, the kids yeah, are also 
you know, they're 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. They're lugging around, you know, uh, 20 pounds worth of, well, maybe not 20, not 15 pounds worth of uh, iron. But, but what we're saying is, is I walk as much as uh, I, I can. But every now and then when I'm playing in a tournament, you're going to jump in a cart because the speed of play is something that we want to maintain so that the, when the tournament's over, you know, the people who are not in the tournament can play that afternoon. So speed of play is an important thing when we have that going on. In high school, we try to get, you know, a tournament in five to six hours worth of, of, of play time for the, the tournament. But once again, it, it's not so much about that for me as it is how can I help my kids do better? How can I have them have the integrity? And also have them be proud of their golf course. Uh, yesterday we had a high school tournament there. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the coaches came to me and said, tell Manny we sure hope that he gets the bid for state to do in the state rotation. Because this is an ideal location. We have restaurants like we talked about the last time. We have hotels. We have, you know, nice places to be. So when we do the state tournament, and it's a three-day event, you know, that we have all this, you know, uh, other things here to entertain people while they're here, not just play golf, because they're not going to come in here and watch their kids play six, uh, for six hours and then go sit in a hotel room. They're going to go look around, they're going to go see things, they're going to do things. And so part of it is, is the pleasure, you know, the pleasure of, of, of the whole atmosphere that we're creating. And I know we talked about potential retirement, it, you know, when, you, when people come in and they look at the various items, you know, I think we should have, you know, a, a visual effect on those. But, once again, my concern is about the, uh, the golf team and the kids that we are, we're supporting. Thank you, and, and that's the key. I don't think the quality of the golf course or the, uh, is going to change. Uh, if we have a great golf course, I think those things out there are going to remain the same. Guys. Uh, but I think the quality of our carts is going to go up when we take over. Yeah, because there's going to be more accountability. They're not going to beat 30 of them down. Then. Yeah, they're going to be five years old, but uh, if they have a 20-year life and all we have to do is replace batteries, then let's, like I said, try it for a year. What's wrong with that? You can make them. There's more than batteries on a golf cart, I guarantee you. Yeah. And I understand yeah. that. More than golf cart. Yeah, there's batteries. no reason that it should cost $48,000 a year to maintain them golf carts. There's no way anybody's going to convince me of that. And you can't maintain them for that much. <laughs> We're going to find out. Is this an action item, Mayor? Yes, it is, and I will accept a motion. If somebody wants to motion for the lease, let's try that one first. I'll make a motion that we go ahead and go forward with the lease under my, my recommendation of possibly going that one year and giving it a trial. Well, we can't lease them for a year. Well, no. What I'm saying is, is I would like to see us leave that open on the one-year trial basis and then go forward. If that doesn't work, let's go ahead and go forward with the lease, like you had mentioned. This is a So your motion is to... Uh, the motion is to pay on, the lease for five on. years or not, guys. Right. Okay, we're either going to renew the lease That's it. or we're not going to renew the lease. That's, That's where we're at. There's, there's no, no one-year one contingent or any of that. We'll look at it in a year when we get there. Okay, but right now tonight, the motion is we either renew a lease or we don't, and we make the balloon payment and we own our golf carts and we go from there. I so make a motion that we make the balloon payment and own the golf carts. I'll entertain a second to that. I'll say five seconds. Councilor Quintana. No. Councilor Sandoval. Yes. Councilor Dickens. Yes. Councilor Lewis. Yes. There it is. No new lease on golf carts. But there should be much more discussion. You bet you. You bet you. As, as we go through this next year, because we're to maintain them and we'll look at the cost. And as we go through this, and another year, we might go ahead and go back and, and lease them. Well, we but have, I'm willing to bet we can. Yes. I mean, there's just, we, we can do this, guys. We can do this. And that's a cost that is no longer going out. And I know we can do this. What, what exactly, Matty, what, what exactly do the. Who's the mechanic over there now? Joe Devon is, is our Joe mechanic. Joe Devon is the mechanic on the golf course. Okay, how, and how is he qualified to be a mechanic? Well, the thing is, what, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Are you going to 
not do the lease, what are we doing with the batteries? We're going to get them right away? Yeah, yes. what we'll do is we'll, we'll I need order. To have them like we're gonna, we'll, yes, we'll get them right <laughs> away, man. We need you to make a, uh, you'll have to get uh, three bids, but I also need you to make a list of all the other parts that need to be okay. replaced on them. How long have you they been down? No, really all the carts are running. Period. All the carts are running. It's just some that won't make eighteen. They, they, go, they won't make eighteen. They and we didn't want to put in batteries before we knew, we didn't want to pay back to put batteries in them now, thinking that we were going to go into a new lease. We didn't want to spend that right. money. Right. Yeah, that would have been costly. That, right. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's why. It, that's why. Battery dies. Right. Right. And we didn't. And we didn't put batteries in it because we were looking at doing a new lease, so well, we didn't want to spend the money. The now we have to maintain the whole unit, not just the battery. Right, 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 the whole unit. And I would recommend that we find out how to test these batteries, get somebody out there to test them, uh, rather than just, you know, well, this has got a, a broken windshield, let's replace it. You know, let's let's have our uh, mechanics go out there and, uh, and, uh, and, and know what kind of equipment we need to test these batteries and and make sure that we're replacing batteries that need to be replaced and not just replacing batteries. Well, yeah, because you can't just put ordinary, ordinary water in the battery. You need some training. Water. Yeah. Specific gravity it's a of the batteries and it's lasted the whole it's work. It's a silk battery, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah, yeah. 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 On this one here, I wanted these on my next meeting, not tonight. These, uh, I want a streamlined application from you for the conditional use permit for everything. I mean, for special permits, for the parties, for the bike rally, for the concerts we're going to have, for the farmer's market. And if it's something that you have to get into the state, say five days in advance, <coughs> And you get your paperwork in, and we'll deal with our citizens on that Friday that we're going to have the event. See what I'm saying? This is the direction I want you to go in. We are going to start helping instead of hurting. We're going to start moving forward instead of hindering and slowing down. Okay? So what I'm looking for from you is a streamlined process on all of our permitting, especially our special permits for the bike rally, the quad, the farmer's market, the concerts we're going to have, the Easter egg hunt. I want these things where they can be done in one day. The entire permit done in one day. And like I said, if it's something like uh, the, art, the art crawl on Santa Fe Avenue, where the state has to have five days notice, then you'll put in your notice five days in advance. And our citizens will do it as it comes to the event. See what I'm saying? Okay, so <clears throat> I discussed this with the city manager. Uh, last week, you know, what I've been doing is I've been putting together all the ordinances and everything that creates each one of the situations so that I can present to you guys and let you guys go ahead and, and I'll, street, I, I, I'll present what I would suggest. I want to one. see the old permitting okay. and I want to see the new permitting, the streamlined one. Okay. Okay? Because it's like I said, there's these four letter words, hurt, and that's what we've been doing. We've been hurting our, our people and our process instead of helping. Okay, and I don't care if it's in building teardowns or if it's in the 4th of July or the quad or whatever it is. Instead of helping get these things done, we're hurting it and we're slowing it down. And I don't want that no more. No more hindering. No more, let's find a reason why we can do something instead of a reason that we cannot. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and, and the, and the, yes, and the codes, and this is something you've got to realize, all of our codes are interpreted in favor of the city. Okay? And that's the way we need to interpret it, is in favor of the city. And if someone sues us, well then we'll pay something to Aaron Brown and we'll defend ourselves. Okay? You understand what, what we want from you? Yes, sir. Okay? Uh, and then once we get that process, we'll go back to your planning and zoning board and they can argue and, and, and we'll get it done. But this is what I want you to present to the council for all of us to look at. Is the old one the new one? And, and how we're going to help people tear down buildings, how we're going to help people clean their yards, how we're going to help them get a farmer's market permit, a permit for the concerts, okay? And like I said, if we have to have a five-day notice with the state, then that's on you. It's not on our citizens. Our citizens will come to you and the city the day that the event has to be done, but we're getting it done. 
generally with the state, they require 30 day uh, advance. Whatever it takes, okay? All I want from you is how to help our public get things done in one or two days instead of it taking 30 days, 40 days, okay? No problem. Uh, just for the record, uh, what basically what we've done or we try to focus on is to cover the city in liability aspects. And I understand that. So that's what it's okay. about. We, we plan for the worst and we hope for the best. And, and so let's start planning for the best. And hoping for the worst. No, <laughs> and don't ever hope for the worst. Pray for the best, too. No, I agree. You know, and, and let's just, because there's got to be a way. I mean, when, I, when I'm told when I'm running for the campaign that the quad almost didn't happen this last year, our 31st quad almost didn't happen, I've got a problem with that. Okay? For 31 years we've been doing this, and I hope to continue it for another 31 years minimum. And it's got to be, as Ruben said, user friendly. Believe it or not, I got a tablet, guys, and I'm figuring it out. Google is a wonderful thing. Okay? And I mean, so yes, user friendly, okay? Help, not hurt. Push forward, not hinder, not slow down the process. And I mean, it's going to put a lot on you, but baby, that's why you got a $10,000 raise, and that's why we pay you money. Okay? And on that note, guys, um, Number 11 is done. It doesn't require any action. Like Go ahead. Marty, Marty, Marty you, you've always done really good work on paperwork. You know, so I know you can do that. So we know you've got it down. Okay. I'll get it. <laughs> okay. I'll have it for you the first Nobody week. Nobody can find you, mind you, but you do a hell of a job. <laughs> you very big work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marty. The next one we have, advisory board appointments. Um, Denise, what do you got on this? I got one paper here. She wants to be put back on the animal board? Yes. Um, Denise Cornette, she currently serves. She wants to be replaced on this board, and I will accept a motion to accept her on the animal board. I'll oh, second. I need a first. I, mean, I, I make a motion. I second. Okay. There we go. Councilor Quintana? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Sandoval? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Okay, that's that. Bang. Um, anybody on the airport advisory board, we need three seats, is that what you're telling me, or two seats? No, actually that's a list of all the members. We just um, need yeah, to okay. reorganize them. So what we're going to do with this list is we're going to have three two-year terms and two four-year terms. Yes, I need to know which ones you want to place where, and that way they can be organized and have dates instead of just kind of being thrown in there. Is there anybody out there from the airport advisory board now? Shouldn't they make that decision themselves? Yes. Well, they're they're created by ordinance, and their terms are supposed to be staggered. Right now, um, we had such a high overturn two years ago that they were all appointed at the same time, and none of them have a date. Get with these people, okay. Denise, and uh, see who wants the two-year terms, who wants the four-year terms, mm -hmm. and who wants the la a large term, whatever it is, and bring this back to us at our next meeting, and we'll approve this. Okay. Okay. And if there's anybody out there that wants to serve on the airport board or the animal board, we do need body. Please. Okay. Next, Rogers Tax Ordinance. Denise, are you doing this one? Sure. Um, basically what she did is she updated it to uh, meet state codes, state standards. Um, everything complies with state statute. The only change that the board requested was that it has a has the language in there that if a person misses more than three meetings in a year, they can be overturned by the board, and someone else can be brought in. By the board or by us? By us. By themselves. Did they add that? They add, added that in, in the... Yes. On you page mean seven, the board will appoint a new tax? No, no, no. The we board will arrive. vote them out. If okay. they miss more than three, and then it would be up to you to replace them. Or the mayor could remove them. Right? Or the mayor can remove them at any time. They don't have to miss anything. Okay. This has been an ongoing problem that I'd like us to straighten out. That'll work. I'll entertain a motion to accept this ordinance. I'll make a motion where you accept this ordinance. 14 1204. I'll second it. Councilor Quintana? Yes. Councilor Sandoval? Yes. Councilor Dickens? Yes. Councilor Lewis? Yes. 
Um, I don't think we need an executive session tonight. Anybody got anything for an executive session? No executive session tonight. Manny, did you have something I see you with your hand up in the back? No, I'm fine. You sure? Well, I was going to say that before when we have all the car shows and events, we used to always get together to the parks at recreation, and we would ask them to, to let us use the park. They would let us use the park. We never went to any anything about any ordinance or... Or That's what we're trying to get back to, man. Okay. The parks know what they're being used for, and if they're open or not. Yes, that's exactly what we're trying to get back to, guys. The only thing they said is, you don't run over a sprinkler. More user friendly. Council comments. Council can talk. A couple of things, and actually, um, Manny. Uh, Props to, to Main Street for the Easter egg hunt. I, there was a lot of uh, positive comments uh, of what took place on Sunday. Thank you very much. Uh, I heard the kids really enjoyed it. And, and then uh, on the other note, uh, the cemetery is really looking, coming along very well, uh, Wayne. Thank you. So just tell the guys to keep up their work and watch out for those headstones, okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> And that's all, that's all I got. Ruben? Uh, I'd like to uh, say that the, those people that were waiting since July finally got their three bumps today. That was good. Uh, they were getting all kinds of compliments because there was a lot of speeders on, uh, on, uh, on East Sage. And I'd also like Paul, Paul for you to look into a, a franchise agreement that, we, that uh, Bob started get going when we got in here that was never finished and that was with the gas company, the Mexico gas company. For some reason we never got it. it they never signed off on it because of something to do with uh, they didn't want to repair the, the road after they dug it up when they had a lead somehow or whatever they were working on their line in the middle of the road. So we need to look into that and find out uh, if we can get that so we can start getting that money from them. Right now we're not getting it. And there's a lot of money involved in it. So if you can look into that franchise, okay. and make sure we ask you. Mr. Dickens? Well, I want to thank Wayne for showing me the video on the, the well, uh, explaining everything foot by foot. It's very interesting and enlightening. And I'd also like to thank Wayne for taking care of all the baseball fields. They're looking in really good shape, and especially for putting in a porta potty. <laughs> I walk my dog there every day. Okay. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Paul, our city manager, and the city workers for taking out the worst speed bump in town and putting in a modern type speed bump that's more user friendly. That's a point of phrase. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Manuel and all of Main Street. That was an excellent Easter egg hunt Saturday. I mean, there was thousands of people here Saturday. And the kids really enjoyed it, especially my four grandkids. They really loved it. And, uh, I'd like to see it bigger and better next year. And I probably would leave out all the businesses, but we had great business participation, donations, and what was amazing, Smith's was handing out Walmart water, Walmart was handing out Smith's water to people. I mean, they were just intertwining, crossing the boundaries, and all joining together. I mean, it was excellent. Uh, had the uh, fire department there, our, our uh, chief of police was there. I mean, it, it was just a great activity. The whole county was there. It, it, it was great. Now, on a little darker side, um, the city was restriping all the crosswalks and the speed bumps and stuff last week. And they have a trailer, either they're not plugging it in or it doesn't have lights. The, the lights are working on the truck, but not on the trailer. Um, you know, they have that as like their crash cushion type thing, and the truck lights are flashing, but nothing's going on on the trailer. So, 
if you could check in on that. Yeah. That would come from a maintenance program coming from our mechanic shop. Uh, it, it could be all all as simple as just plugging it in. I, I don't know what the, the story is. That's for all our vehicles. Trailers, uh, uh, everything we have. Okay. Uh, does the city own the parking lot in front of the fire and ice where all the events were, or does the post office? The city does. We're at, we're at right, right here at the right post here, office? Right here. City does. Yeah. City owns it. Okay. The, the reason why I'm asking, I, I was approached about this. You know, we, we have the sign there in the post office park as you're exiting, you know, watch for pedestrians and stuff. And you got this big raise up that people have to climb up or crawl up or walk all the way around. I, I'd like to see some steps and, and some railing installed for the people, especially the elderly. You know, it's inconvenient for them to go to the parking lot into the post office. We can, we can ask the post office about that, but that post office property. The, the parking lot? Not the parking lot, but the, the cement area. Where, 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 the the drive, where the drive-through is, that right? The drive yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the drive-through. Right. There, there's a door there where everybody goes into their post office boxes. That, that's the, the main side entrance. The on the I, side, yeah. they, they have the sign, watch for pedestrians. So I think they might appreciate well, we'll talk to them about it. I don't. I don't I will talk to them about it, but I don't know if they ever designed that to be an entrance there. I don't know if they wanted people to be crossing there, but we'll talk to them about it. But that is there. That if we were to do any work for that, we'd have to have their permission because that cement and things there is is their property. And to find well, out. No, I'm talking about putting it in the parking lot over to over to, to get in okay. to to the exit way there, mm -hmm. so the people can enter into the, the, the doorway. Then one more item uh, on the construction phase. I guess that was part of it on First Street. They tore down the old uh, laundromat there. It was a dry cleaner or something along the, the San Jose. That was part of uh, our building teardowns. It didn't okay. have anything to do with the streets. Well, but it was coincidental. But anyway, it, it opened up an access way to uh, Davis Street and Geist there, and the people would was wondering if the city could put up a fence to prevent everybody from using it as an access, entering and leaving, and having to do guys and, and the other streets like they should. Yeah. Where is this at? We'll there by the Methodist we'll Church. We'll the church. We'll where the where they, they tore down that we'll little we'll laundromat. And, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go look at and, it. And it enters straight into we'll Davis, the, the intersection of Davis okay. and guys. Don't come to her. Yeah. I'll be at 7. For you, that that work. Works, okay? That <laughs> work. I'm that. That's all I have. Mr. Lewis? Uh, just like to follow up on the crosswalk striping from uh, Riverwalk Park to the other half of Riverwalk Park, from the Riverwalk Park to the pond. Uh, that needs to be striped and probably slow down the traffic there as well. There's some guy, I don't know who he is, got a yellow car, runs around town, and it sounds like a, a hot ride. And uh, he was there was 25 kids um, in that the in that park the other day, and uh, he went flying by there about 40 miles an hour. Yeah, if, if there was ever a place to put a crosswalk, actually, well, that would be the well, well, put high yeah, right across the two parks. Yeah. Put yeah. some kind of a reduced speed sign, or yeah, well, that would be double double speed, you know, d double speed fine there. And any 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 of these towns you go to, they uh, there's signs that say uh, uh, people who are crossing the street have the right of way, and when somebody's standing at a crosswalk, cars are supposed to stop, and that's what those signs should say. Because they have dogs with them, and they have little children. Yeah. Children are running ahead of their kid, uh, their parents, and well, we all we all know that story. Yeah. Well, there's always something wrong. Yeah. Well, the kids are going from the playground over to the gazebo to play with the ducks back and forth. That's all I have there. Okay, I have got one thing, and I'm going to read this into the record. It's a letter from Miss Sidney Reynolds that ran for mayor. I was informed on April 15, 2014, that members of the Animal Care Center staff were forbidden to seek medical intervention in the event an animal became ill. I humbly request that this newly, new ruling be publicly addressed so that alternate funding may be actively sought by community members. Although this may not be an affluent part of the United States, humanity should still be preserved. Um, this is a decision that I made, an executive decision. We are not going to spend taxpayers' dollars 
on a dog that's been hit by a car. We're not going to pay taxpayer dollars on a stray dog that we pick up the side of the road that might have parvo or something else. We're going to put those animals down. Okay? I mean, I'm not going to ask the taxpayers of grants to pay veterinarians on bills on animals that may or may not be adopted. And the last one I signed was for 2000 and some dollars. So we're not going to do this no more. Okay? If you own a dog and you want to spend that kind of money, which I will on my dogs, Okay, but I'm not going to spend it on a stray dog that's not going to be adopted anymore. Yeah, if they want to start it. And if they want to start their own funding, here it is for the record. Start your own funding and take care of them stray dogs. Okay, that's what they wanted on the record, so that's on the record. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night. Thank you.